Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today we're going to be going over what the Salesforce Architect Certification Path, what the different types of architects are, and how you can become one. So let's first start off by what do architects actually do? So architects are someone who are going to plan and design out a larger project. So because they are going to need to be working on larger projects and that's what their skill set is used for, they're typically going to be working for large corporations who have a larger Salesforce org, or they're going to be working for consulting agencies who are going to be designing projects for possibly mid-sized or smaller companies who use Salesforce but who don't need a full-time Salesforce resource. Or, and this is in my husband's case as well, he works for a smaller startup company but they are looking to grow very fast and so they want to start their Salesforce org off really, really well to build out their Salesforce org um, efficiently and quickly so then it can grow with them and it's built right so they don't have to deal with any technical debt later on down the road. A lot of the day-to-day -day of architect is going to be determined by the type of architect that they are. There are five types of Salesforce architects that you can be and while there is a lot of crossover in their day-to-day, -day, it just deals with different aspects of Salesforce, what they are going to be doing. So let's talk about the first three and they're all kind of related. The first one is going to be your basic architect, which is called an application architect. They know a lot about Salesforce architecture, so they're going to know about the data model, about development, they're going to know about the security model and how to share things, and they're just really mainly focused on Salesforce. The next one is going to be the system architect, and this type of architect really understands how to work with other systems in Salesforce and integrate the two. And then once you have both the application architect and the system architect, then you can sit for your certified technical architect certification, which that one is a very difficult certification. And I think there's only about 400 technical architects that are certified by, by Salesforce um, in the whole ecosystem. So this role is extremely rare. As well as this certification is a beast of a certification. You have multiple parts. You've got, you have to build out stuff and then you also have to sit and defend your build out based upon a scenario that they've given you in a limited amount of time. If you wanna watch a quick overview, you can go over to Coding with the Force channel. He recently took his CTA and he did a breakdown video of what it was like sitting for the CTA exam. Beyond those three certifications that make up the application architect, the system architect, and then the CTA. You can be a B2B solution architect as well as a B2C solution architect. The B2B solution architect is going to be a business to business architect and the B2C architect is going to be the business to customer architect. These are just going to be based upon different business models if they're selling to another business or if they are selling directly to a customer. So all of five of these certifications have prerequisites. Some certifications you'll get automatically when you get the prerequisite and other certifications have an additional exam once you have those prerequisites done. All of these certification paths are really, really difficult because they have at least three prerequisites to get them, if not more based upon those prerequisite certifications, if those prerequisites have prerequisites. But the most simple of all these architecture certifications to get is going to be the application architect, which is just going to focus on Salesforce and building stuff within Salesforce. So if you want to be an architect and you are starting from the very beginning, this is how you're going to go as far as the certification path. One, you're going to get associate, which is going to be the pre-admin certification. It's not a prerequisite or anything to admin, but it shows that you um, are a super user of Salesforce or that you know some about Salesforce, how to learn within Salesforce, how to navigate around Salesforce, and that kind of thing. Then you are going to get your admin certification, which is going to be a lot of administrative tasks that you'll do within Salesforce, like setting up users, how to freeze users, when you'd want to do those things, as well as the data model, security model, reporting and automations, and a bunch of other stuff. This one I find pretty difficult, just because typically someone who is getting the admin certification is going to be new to Salesforce, and the certification bounces around a lot. So it is a lot less niche than other certifications might be, like some more certifications that we'll talk about in just a little bit. So now that you have gotten your associate and your admin, you're gonna to wanna to jump into the architecture path and working on those prerequisites to get your application architect certification. The first one is going to be the app builder certification. This one is like the bridge between an admin and a developer certification where you're learning where that line is between admin tasks versus developer tasks and what should be done with an admin and what should be done with a developer as well as just generally how to build some really awesome stuff within Salesforce. The next certification is going to be the data architecture certification. While this does have architect in the name, which they changed this recently, um, the data architect certification is gonna mostly focus on 
the data model of Salesforce and the deep intricacies and limitations that you'll have be facing when you are an architect. So this really prepares you to work and understand the data model when you are that architect, the application architect, to be able to plan out and build stuff. So next is going to be the sharing and visibility architect, another certification that has architect in the name. While this has changed recently, um, most companies view the application architect as you are ready to be an architect, uh, whereas these sharing and visibility architect and the data architecture certifications are more of a qualification. Sharing and visibility is going to deal a lot with the different permissions that you can have within Salesforce, how to make sure this person sees this, but this person doesn't see this, and the different tools that you'll be using when you are building out a security model with in Salesforce. And then the final and fourth prerequisite to becoming an application architect is going to be the Platform One Developer Certification. In talking with other application architects, they say that this Platform Developer One certification is going to be the most difficult out of all the prerequisites to be able to get, especially if you don't have that previous developer experience. So now once you have all four of those prerequisites, you will be given that application architect certification for free, meaning that there is no additional certification once you have the prerequisites. This is the same for the system architect. Once you have those prerequisites done, then you'll be able to get that certification for free. If you want to go into system architecture, you will need to have the same platform developer for one, integration architect, identity and access management architect, and development lifecycle and deployment architect as well. That certification will be given to you as free once you have all four of those prerequisites. Now, once you have both the application architect and system architect, if you want to, you can go for CTA, but it is really expensive and is really difficult to study for. Now, the B2B and the B2C architecture certifications are a little bit different where once you have the prerequisites, then you can go ahead and sit for an additional certification. So for B2B, the prerequisites for those that is going to be the same as the application architect. So it's going to be app builder, data architect, sharing and visibility architect, as well as the platform developer one certification. If you want to be a B2C architect, then you will need to get, and you will need to get the data architecture certification, platform app builder, as well as integration architect to be able to sit for that certification. One thing I will say about the architecture role is that it can be really rewarding to plan out this huge project, this huge implementation. Um, it is also really time consuming to think through all the different scenarios and to be able to come up with a plan and effectively communicate that with your team who will be building it out. That is a kind of an overview of the architecture certification paths. Um, I would love to hear from you if you are planning on going for architecture certifications, what your study plan is, and how you're going to go about it, as well as which architecture certification you're going to go for. All of these are going to lead to a fantastic career where you're building out really crazy awesome solutions. So I'd love to hear your comments down below. Thank you so much for joining me today. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Emily Call MBA. Um, you can check out the courses down below or on salesforceupskill.com. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.